Hello, I'm Karen and in today's video I'm going to try and explain the origins of crochet in one way and um, I will also want to, because the, the, I want everybody to be respected who is involved in this and I want the privacy to be kept hidden, mine included. I don't want journalists and everybody snooping around and everything else because it's quite possibly going to happen. And um, because this involves the royal family and Napoleon and um, the Penelope magazines and everything else, um, I'll say Queen Victoria, so... Because of all these implications of all the, the royals involved, I'm not quite sure how far my freedom of speech is allowed to go without me being deleted from YouTube. So, and I want this to be told, this uh, this story needs to be told and I want it to be told in the most respectful way possible. I believe that I can actually do it and I can give a little synopsis, is that what you call it? And I'm sorry, I, can't, I come from a frameworker's background <laughs> you know i'm not i'm not um i'm not university educated all of my life i have loved encyclopedias i absolutely love them and if you check up on me you'll find that i use google just like an encyclopedia i have loved history and been fascinated by it and this is probably one of the most important things that i have ever done and will produce in my life um, I want the permission to be able to write the story. I want, um, I don't know if I'm allowed to enter it into the Dublin Museum's printing um, call for the 20th century printing evidence of things. But I, I know I'm right. I just, I know it and I've got as much proof as I possibly can, okay? So I'm going to try and share my proof. Um, evidence of my proof, I want to be included. Um, is uh, there's a painting of Napoleon um, painted in 1812 there is a painting of the royal family with um, Queen Victoria, Prince Albert and importantly Princess Helena just there I want to use the 18, this is the 1833 edition of Penelope magazine. I want to use the 1823 edition and the 1821 edition. Um, I also want to use Miss Lambert's books, especially the one that dated 1842. I want to use, oh, I don't know where my little tab's gone. Now. I might have to close the tab down to be able to do this one. We've got Napoleon. It's just there, look. I want to use Penelope's web of the the meaning of Penelope's web. I want to use Homer's Odyssey of Ulysses and also the Baghdad battery. There are all my things off the internet. Um, I also want to use some information, um, well actually a picture in Liz Paludin's Crochet History book. I have proof as well of the date that I bought this book. So I could not possibly have copied this particular piece of work that I've made. Um, as you already know from my previous videos, I actually showed you how to do this stitch here. And since then I've learned how to do this stitch, this stitch, this stitch. And also in the chain work, I've actually discovered the actual correct way to do that. And this is a produce of this particular part of the pattern there okay and um, I want to also use excuse me I was trying to follow Mamsel Rigo's um, very very first pattern that she published in 1846 so what Mamsel Rigo's 1846 book to be included and this is a diamond I know most people see a diamond like this shape as a diamond this is actually representing a jewel diamond is what that shape is all about. It's a, an octagon shape. I managed to decipher the pattern to get to this stage and I've just put my own edge of single crochet all the way around the edge. That's what I've managed to produce from that. I also want to use the granny blanket squares and the um, patterning and everything to go with that as part of my evidence. 
Okay, I've managed to do that in five minutes. That was cool. <laughs> I thought it was going to take a lot longer than that. Okay, the date of factual references that I want to include to be able to qualify for the... Um, Sorry, you have to excuse my scruffy notes and handwriting because it is all rough. I, this is what I, this, if I just show you here, this book here has 100 sheets in it and I've got maybe 20 sheets left in my book. This whole book is filled with information that I have actually done this week, including translations, which I shall show you from the beginning of Penelope, um, where I actually wrote out, I, help, I used Google to help me translate and so that I could come up with the answers that I've come up with. Um, my blah, blah, blah. So the factual evidence that I want to provide to go with my story is 1467 Gobelins as a Dyer's Factory. 1602, Henry IV of France rented space inside Gobelins Factory for his Flemish tapestry makers. 1629, tapestry workshops taken over by Gobelins Sons. Um... 1633, Charles, the son of um, the Gobelins, he becomes the head of that. In 1650, the partnership ended and split into two. Six, 1763, sorry, Detroit's Encyclopedia, which is a French encyclopedia, has tambour embroidery listed as an art and shows the four-inch needles, the handle with the screw and a tambour frame. In 1789 to 1799, the Gobelins was closed. 1799 Go goblins sorry goblins reopens oh and i'm sorry oh then we need to skip to the date 1809 americans first woman patented a weave on a straw hat in the herringbone design 1812 monsieur drago and his two daughters um one of them was widowed they arrive in cockshaw and begin tumberlace factory then we go to 1821. In 1821, Napoleon died and the Penelope Dutch magazine was published. 1823, Crochet appears in the Penelope magazine. 1826, Goblins took over by Bourbons and carpets were added to the tapestry works. 1829, Charles Walker opens the Limerick Lace Factory. 1833, Penelope publishes second crochet item. 1838, Charles Walker posts his history works to T. Fleming. 1839, Mr. Jordan patents, elect, um, it's not actually called electrography, it's actually called galvanising in his patent. And in 1840, Miss um, J. Gauguin, um, um, I'm not quite sure how pronou to pronounce her name there, she publishes a star bag pattern and that's in Edinburgh. 1841, the T. Fleming history engraving, history engraving book is published. 1842, Miss Lambert, FS is a married name, publishes crochet in, and history in America. 1843, Charles Walker and his wife die within months of each other. 1844, Mr. Spencer, um, in papers regarding patent case involving electrography, Mr. Spencer denies this. 1846, Mamsel Rigo's first crochet book published. 1847, Miss Lambert republishes her first book with alterations to history and patterns. 1848, Mamsel Rigo books says they are aware of a breach of copyright as far as to include the mistakes. 1851 is where I come in and I find my Bridget Hutton from Ireland and I was trying to find out if she was a direct ancestor of mine. 1859, Miss Lambert's books, Ladies' Complete Guide to Needlework and Embroidery is also wanted to be there. 1974, Weldon's Practical Crochet, 1995, Liz Paludin's book, 2016, my emails between Dr. Matthew Potter and myself. I want it to be known that Dr. Potter never assisted me in any way, shape or form. Um, he actually sent me an email last Monday, whatever the date was last Monday, and he told me that I needed to contact Annie Potter and another lady, I can't even remember her name, and he had no authority um, to be discussing any further details with me in my quest. I also would like to include my PDF files I've produced, um, my Google Books that um, is in, inside my um, huddle. 
inside my huddle I actually have obtained um, Google there's, there's a Google Books which is a library um, I want to include Wikipedia and HP uh, Hewlett Packard, Packard that is home printer and fonts um, I've already said Weldon's practical crochet so um, and also I want to include the Baghdad battery specifically the one in Seleucia on the Tigris okay managed to do all of that in 10 minutes I'm doing really really good <laughs> okay so hopefully that is enough for the people of authorities to be able to um, know that I'm actually on the right track and everything else for those that actually want to know why I've actually used these particular items in my video is because I'm actually going to tell you that I was so so close I was so so close with my previous evidence that it's this last week has absolutely I've barely slept again I've written and written and written and searched and I've found evidence once I did once I found my final link I was like oh my god then it was everywhere everywhere I looked I could see it and I can still see it so I need to tell you what actually happened and why um, we're in the state that we're in <laughs> and why nobody knew the origins of crochet because what actually happened uh, if we go right back to the beginning in Goblin's factory Goblin's factory was some dyers oh there's one more piece of evidence that I haven't said sorry the last piece of evidence is to do with um, Queen Victoria and the crochet scarves okay so I have a bit of another piece of evidence there, but I'm not going to show you just that just yet because those people that are in the know, they probably know what I've got already. <laughs> they've probably tapped all my phones. They've probably, I don't know, you know, because this is involving the Queen and everything. And oh my gosh, what a most amazing story have I found out. Okay, so this as this story goes, um, in, in 1467, um, Goblins was a, a factory. Um, it actually was on the banks of the Bièvre in Paris. What a beautiful place to start this story. And in 1602, um, the Henry Henry the Fourth of France rented some space inside the Goblins factory for his Flemish tapestry makers. So we know that in 1602, that tapestry was already invented. We know it states that they, they opened it for his tapestry makers. So this story actually goes back um, a lot further than you actually think. Now, the reason why I said to you that there was a most amazing, um, I said to you I was so close with the patent story, um, is actually the, the reason why the patent thing is so, so important is because of um, kings and queens and so what um and the rules of the land so in um in the 1600s in france there was no such thing as you being able to allow to patent something and um as the things go the the tapestry was there the tapestry evolved and as the tapestry evolved if, if, if you don't know about a tapestry i'll give you a brief explanation what happens is is you get you've got lots of threads that come down like this and people weave the work in and out. And it's a bit like um, on the television, you've got your little tiny, tiny pixels. Yeah, and they and they use little tiny, tiny colored dots with their, with their, the way that their yarn is woven in and out to be able to create a picture which is equally as beautiful as a painting. And probably, probably more beautiful in, in the senses of, of, of everything that's involved in it. So, um, so, and then what actually happened was, is that as, as they evolved and say the factory, we've got 1650, the factory split up in two. The reason why the factory split up in two is because the famous odyssey of um, Ulysses, which was written in Greek, um, the goblins, they, um, oh, I'm sorry, the Flemish people. <laughs> the Flemish people came along and the Flemish people um I'm not this is not I'm not 100% sure on this one one of them <laughs> one of them was writing out the rewriting out the Greek 
um, Odyssey. Okay, that was the picture that I showed him, I think. So, and then they shared it with the other one because they were trying to solve a mystery. And the mystery involved the Baghdad battery. I'm going to show you the Baghdad battery again, just so that you can see what the Baghdad battery is, if I haven't crossed that off my um, huddle. So just bear with me one minute. There it is at the front. The Baghdad battery. So this is an earthenware clay pot. There is a cylindrical copper tube and um, another metal tool. Okay, and there's lots of historical things and they're all saying that you know, it was some kind of battery and it was used for this, it was used for that and everything else. Now I'm going to tell you what it actually was used for and how I've linked everything together. Okay, my clues, surprisingly enough, came with my daughter when I very first made my first bag. She went, oh, it looks like a pineapple. <laughs> and in the um, translations of my Dutch work, these, this um, this crochet bag is imaged. Um, they, 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 I've translated the instructions. They're actually, do you know when you actually know how to crochet? They're actually really quite close, to be fair. Um, but anyway, why is this involved in a pineapple? Right, okay, so what... It's supposed to be some kind of battery. They've all been saying that and it actually can do the galvanizing. So that is where you've got you've got one piece of metal, which they was using copper and you could cover it with silver. Right. Which is what they use in the process to be able to make Mademoiselle Rigo's um, bell gauge that's patented by Chambers and Co. OK, so what the, re the the bit about this, though, this is the bit that got me is that I've, I've been interested in this as well for years and years. And I never, ever in my wildest dreams would link it to crochet. But actually, it does. The actual pot itself is a pot. The actual cylinder of the copper is a pineapple corer. And the actual stick with the things on it was to be able to stick inside the um the pineapple um, and then it was all held in it. so you've got the core of the pineapple inside there and, and this was the tool to pull it back out <laughs> yeah they also used the tool to be able to pick up the bits of pineapple that they was eating and it was all like stuck there was a, a seal on the side of the top of the pot and i do believe that they actually was using it originally as two things the first thing was actually to be able to make some kind of wine and the second thing was it came in really handy <laughs> to stop your balls of wool from rolling around. It's even got a notch in it. And this probably was probably one of the first tools that they was actually using to crochet with. Um, so this and this, um, the reason why I've chosen this one is because it was from Seleucia in the Tigris. And you know, I said the other day where Mesopotamia began and it was under these, this river that was in between Iran and Iraq. Well, it's the Tigris River. It didn't begin with an E. It began with a T. I was nearly there. Okay, so, um, so then, so, so this, when it was all like put together and just left over the years, the acids that was left from the pineapple had some kind of chemical reaction with this rod that was in the middle, because it was, um, it was all separated from each other, and it had some kind of um oh, there was a reaction on it that gave so because these was made out of copper and it gave it um a, oh, like a pearlescent is the word i'm looking for a pearlescent effect to it okay and they was all trying to discover how to do this the answer's with a pineapple okay <laughs> um so that is my answer for that one and then um so while they was trying to do all these translations, they actually, the actual story goes, there's, um, in the Odyssey story, is the story of Penelope's web. So we'll get your Penelope's web back up, unless I cross that off. No, Penelope's web, which is um, essentially like a star, I suppose, is what you want to call it. You know, it, it is like a star. And it the, the reasons behind it, because of the actual style and, and the technique of it i do believe it actually was there was a central point and obviously everything spreads out from that central point so they've been you know that could be the inventions it could be um to do with all sorts of different things is what different people have said but the story goes that while um 
while Ulysses was off fighting the Trojan War, he um, Penelope was left at home. And so she was creating, which has been translated into a tapestry, it's been translated into embroidery, and it's also actually been ta uh, translated in 1994 by Butler um, to mean that she was working on a timber frame. So the tapestry workers, so the Flemish people, so it's the Flemish who, the Flemish have the story. OK, and it's, it's a, a story that's told to those all about, you know, this, this weaving thing and everything else. And they actually are trying to find out what it was she was weaving because it's supposed to be one long continuous thread as the story goes. So the Chinese, they said that um, they got involved because of the silkworm, because you can join the two strands together while the process is going. Um, the, um, but the actual truth of the actual... Um, material that they used is actually from the leaves of the pineapple if you if you scrape all of the green off the leaf you've got these little strands inside it and if you tie little tiny teeny tiny knots and do it all together you can actually make a beautiful a beautiful fine thread but it's not as fine as the quality I suppose of silk and things because that's why they call it Penelope's because it looked like it looks like a piece of timber lace that's been unpicked. You know, we've worked in it and then you've unpicked it because it looks like. So, um, yeah. So it was made out of pineapple leaves. So that is that is all the references to do with pineapples. Okay. Now, when um, this was all discovered, it was discovered in France, and Napoleon um, was the ruler of of that time. And because they didn't have any patenting laws, um, he was horrified to find that people was trying to pinch all of this work. Because as far as he was concerned, it, it was all all happening on French soil, so it belonged to the French. So, and he wanted to be able to protect that. Um, and so, because in um, previously in England we'd already made patent laws and, you was, and women was allowed to patent um, articles but there was rules that went with this to be able to patent it so um, what they did is they closed the Goblins factory and they um, hid the Flemish people so that nobody would know what was going off um, and they actually hid them on, with the timber lace because that was one of their inventions that they made so um so yeah so so they was hidden <laughs> i'm sorry i'm 22 minutes in i'm really scared this story is going to take forever to be able to take um but anyway so um napoleon um and the king of um france they then was napoleon classed as the king i don't know if the no because we've still got henry of france haven't we I don't know which king it was at the time. I'm really sorry that bit. I haven't been. I can't. I haven't got it on my notes to be able to like just. And I can't memorize everything. But anyway, um, they come to what in the end. Um, what happens is is that all the it all comes to like, like um, everybody starts to know about it, and the 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 Spanish they take the actual the idea of the you know the, the bit of the pineapple and the weaving and everything, and they they begin to do the weaving. The Italians start working um, with lace work and um, embroidery. And before you know it, everybody, like all this stuff is like spreading all over the place. And, and French are like, whoa, you know, like you can't do this. This, this is our discovery. You know, like we, this, is, this is ours. So they actually come to England um, because during the process of all of this, the Americans find out and the Americans... Um, they know it's something to do with involved with a straw hat and they patent the idea saying it's to do with straw hat and silk because that's that's the only information that they've got. Little did they know when they ripped that hat to bits that the actual pattern that they was looking for was a little tiny piece, um, the chain work. It was a little tiny decoration right at the very, very top of the hat and also a, a, a little tiny bit of it around the trim. That was the invention that they was trying to patent okay so because uh, um 
they just did. Um, <laughs> I was trying to get all the dates and everything exactly right. I was going with the story, but anyway, so so the Americans have done that. So we've got to 1809. In 1812, Mademoiselle um, Rigo and her dad and her sister all come over to England. Now, the information that I found that she was widowed, okay? And we all know that she marries Charles Walker and she actually goes and does the factory with Charles in 1829. Okay, so, um, but then obviously you wanted to know why was the crochet published in 1821 and in 1823? Well, the reason why was because a law that um, Napoleon made a code. I don't know the entirety of the code and I haven't translated it all. It's written obviously in French and uh, like I've already said, um, I have to use Google to translate because even though I did learn a little bit of French at school, I have to confess... I'm just a common Englander that really my, my main language is, my language is English and um, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, world, I haven't learned all your languages, but I am trying to unite the world with this story. So, um, so anyway, so part of the rules to do with the patenting was that the, in, the works needed to be published. So they published it in um, Amsterdam because they thought it was going to be safe in Amsterdam. The Dutch, when they translated the French over into English, they didn't have all of the words it was necessary. Um, sorry, they didn't translate. They translate the French into Dutch, so they didn't have they they didn't have this, the the correct words to use as translations. Um, also, they probably was a bit annoyed that they um, I don't know because it was like um, Barbara Ann, and she was a woman's activist rights and everything else involved in that then. She probably stuck by that decision. But anyway, um, whichever way around, the translations weren't very good and it was actually called hate stitch. Um, the, yeah, the reason why they hated it was because like they didn't want France to keep it, but France didn't want to publish it and announce it to the whole wide world because it was still in its infancy and it hadn't been evolved properly and they wanted that time to be able to evolve it. And also they needed to be able to write it in a written form to be able to have their idea patented so they needed to keep it secret so that's why mademoiselle um rigo and her dad and her sister came over to cockshall in england and they set up the tambalese factory and by setting up the tambalese factory and then being left alone it was considered that they was then um safe but they found that they um they needed support and um so what they did is they actually went over to ireland and they have got a beautiful factory in Ireland. And what they did is because they were such a lovely family, they used girls from the very original Magdalens, um, who were children that was um, invalids, they was blind, they um invalids, I'm sorry, I'm no don't don't take me on being politically correct. In the historical words, it does say that they was invalids, okay. I'm just repeating what I've read. So um Oh, gosh, this is just so complicated. <laughs> anyway, um, so you've got those over in Ireland developing the art of crochet. OK, because that was what they was trying to protect, because everything else had been pinched from them, more or less. Um, so anyway, they get to the stage where they're nearly ready to actually print um, to be able to do all of this work. And um, say so the Queen, Queen Victoria um, Queen Victoria's involved in all of this because um, she's um, obviously because of Napoleon and the King of France and so um, in when they actually go to like to start getting ready to do some publishing works the the history of engraving is sent to be able to go to publishers this is where the publishers then notice what is called um, they call it um, this this little symbol so there's like there's the arrow there's the the you know the letter d if you have it the other you need everything needs to be back to front to be able to print it so you have to sort of so when you look at it it's back to front then when you print it, it comes out the right way around so um yeah so um oh, just looking at this cross has just made me realize that i've missed out a little bit about because the weaving pattern because it's on the back of this on the back of this, I don't know if you can see it, there's like there's a little tiny cross of to do with the weaving, which was for that. But anyway, um, 
So where have I got to? We've got to we've got to Ireland and we've got to Mr. Jordan. Right, Mr. Jordan is part of the, of the printing company. He goes to patent the stuff and there ends up being a court case, well, a patent case. Now, the Queen already knows all about the crochet, but the thing is, is that with the printing evidence that Mr. Walker sent to um, Mr. Fleming and the printers, um, there was also things to say. There was the arrow, there was um, the d shape, which is actually... Part of, do you know part of the text that they was because they was actually wanted to print it all themselves so they actually even printed they made all of their own um there was cut it they, they used blocks of wood box wood and um mr spencer he engraved out of the box of wood and um mr walker he was doing the bits of the copper work and the little tiny copper plates was what they was done they, they made them into little tiny grids oh actually I can show you the sort of thing of like how patterns can actually drew one. You just bear with me. Here, here look. What they did is they made little tiny grids and this is the tapestry version where they've got colour dots inside of it so that they could be able to make their tapestry patterns. Okay, so when it comes to actually doing the, the crochet, they'd got like little lines, um, little arrows, little shapes and everything to be able to represent whether we what stitch he was doing you know like with these so um so yeah because of all of those things including the bell um they was all involved in the patent case the queen obviously already knew this because of the king of france and everything being trying to kept a secret and because they they still had that secrecy thing that they had to keep because they they couldn't let on that they already knew about crochet and that they was protecting them from um, the people that was trying to pinch everything from France. So um, they devised a plan <laughs> and to be able to that, to be able to carry on, to be able to still be able to keep it. So they, what they did is they let Mr. Jordan, he had the electrography, um, which is called the galvanizing. And the way that they described it and everything was using this um, device, which actually is... Let's just get my hood all, which is the Baghdad device, where you've got a cylinder inside a cylinder with the copper and everything. And when you put an acid inside it, it actually, um, the, the metals stick to the copper inside it so that they produce this, um, I don't know, let's say the electrography, that's what you just call it, because it was supposed to be to do with electrics and things. So, um, I'm making a power source out of that. So, um, so they let him have that. And they still carried on with the plan that they needed to have some more works published because the thing is, is that they actually used the Penelope papers inside the patent case because they needed, because... Mr. Um, Spencer was being accused of like not understanding all to do with printing and everything and how, how could he possibly have come up with all these ideas and printing in colour and everything else. So um, so he, he produced um, his mum <laughs> because Mama Zarigo was Mr. Spencer's mum and um, so she was the one that produced the art. Miss Lambert was... Um, I don't know whether she's still Miss Lambert at that point, but later on she did marry Mr. Spencer, which is why her initials become FS. And so they both together are translating um, the French, the, the, they've been, say they translated the Greek in the beginning into French. And then they was, they'd written their own, they were trying to write in French um, how to do crochet patterns. But... They couldn't use the, the printed dot things because they these also came out in the um, patent case. So Berlin wool manufacturers claimed that one as their invention because it went with their wool and it went with the things and they'd be able to paint it in Germany because it was in a different country because there was different rules. If you when it comes to copywriting, you put you can you can copyright your item. So it's like if I invent something in England then by rights I have to patent it in England. Um, but, so, 
this is why I crochet. It had to be evolved on what was classed as British soil to then be patented as a British thing. And they needed all this backup history to be able to prove it because of the way the patent rules worked. But because of the patent case, um, <laughs> the second patent case um, involving Mr. Jordan and the printing things, all of this came out. But it had to be kept a secret because it was still under the laws of the patenting things. So they, they carried it on, keeping a secret. But the um, Queen Victoria, she was, she, they, they also, they all needed to be able to have a source to be able to trace it back to. Because, the, you know, when, for historians, in future historians like me, I've gone to search for the history of crochet and I needed to find the beginning of it. And everybody's going, oh, no, 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 you can't have, you can't do anything until you've got to the Penelope magazine. Yeah? And I say, um, the, the, it became available for, for, through um, Google Playbooks in my Google library and so I was able to read it, able to translate it and start to read it and in the translations um, I even have the fact that it's actually saying that it was the Goblins, it, it all began in the Goblins um, so because of it doing that and then what had happened is if it, the, the Queen she was so clever. She gave away loads of clues to be able to help you find what had actually happened. Um, but but she still, obviously she was bound by the laws of, of the secrecy in the Patent Act that she couldn't say anything. So um, the painting of Napoleon, we'll look at the painting of Napoleon. Because obviously Napoleon, like he really wanted it to be announced as being French. He really did bless his cockney socks. And there's some pictures of him where he got really sad. Um, later on but yeah on the picture of napoleon there is actually a little tiny gold uh, ball with the gold star on it and it's got the code there where he's actually he's like producing this new code because i think essentially um he, i mean he would have loved to have had it patented and he was still trying to hope that they would go back to france and eventually patent some of their other things but as the time went by people kept stealing more and more things um and because they knew about this patent case with this electrography, the journalist was all like snooping around and everything else, which is why I've said, please, journalists, don't do it. Let us all tell the story in our own time. You know, I, I need permission from the Queen for this, okay, to be able to tell every single thing because um, I'm not telling every single thing inside here. But the Queen did help me, bless her cotton socks, right, because in there, look, there's a painting, there is the pineapple, they are wearing a star. The sash that they have got here in this sort of um, turquoise, a beautiful shade. It's almost almost a jade colour. And um, they was they was giveaways. They was um, for the scarves that was made. She is actually wearing um, the jewelry that she's wearing is all made out of emeralds, which Prince Albert designed himself. Which made me think about this because. Um, this is made out of some kind of, I don't know whether it's some sort of brass or something, with all the little tiny beads in it, with the little tiny diamond in the centre, surrounded by the star and everything else. And I do believe that this actually might be um, one of maybe even um, a piece of jewellery that the royal family actually had something to do with Mamas Rigo. Also, the ring that I've got um, is linked into this because on the underside of this ring, there is actually the star pattern and this is made out of a metal which is not gold and it is also not silver. It is not plated and it never ever rusts. And inside it, because it's one of those pillbox rings, those special rings, I'm sorry, the, the quality of what's inside it has got bits in it from over the years. But it is the most beautiful, well I personally think it's the most beautiful smelling perfume that I've ever come across. Um, the key, the key is because of the bureau and the bureaucracy and everything else and also it actually looks like a gun which means about I'm going to war was my representation with that. Um, but anyway, we shall continue. Inside the photo, inside the painting, sorry. Oh, actually on this particular one you can't actually see what I want to show here. Is actually the corner of the carpet of the rug there is actually turned over which to me is representing the fact of Goblin's tapestry that on the back of it you can't there's no loops on it so it's um almost the same as the front 
which is the same as the granny square and the um the russian outfit there that's something to do i think to do with um with the little russian dolls we're keeping something inside something inside something um which i think is new because of the way that they was hiding things like oh, i don't know where my hook's gone see even i've lost my hook um it was those was those little things to keep your hook safe <laughs> so you don't lose them because um yeah so that's that's my reasoning in there yeah. so the queen actually and so i know that the royal family is not going to be really upset with me because they actually gave out all these things and also um and I know the Queen was a little bit naughty, Queen Victoria, by I suppose, involving the scarves and everything. But it, the scarves was her thing because of this wool. Now, this wool, as you can see, is the silver bell, okay, that links you back to Mademoiselle Rigo's bell. And it's actually got Bry nylon on it, which means that nylon actually was invented before it's actually class has been invented. The bry nylon is also an anagram, or what would you call it an anagram? Yeah, I think it is with that. So it's, um, and it actually, is, um, so, so you have it in the other way around, so it's Berlin No. The little tiny red cross above it, if I just go back to my picture of um, the Queen Victoria. In Queen Queen Victoria, on these on the stars that they've got here, there is a little tiny red cross, really tiny inside of those. I'm sorry, the quality of this picture that I've actually brought up, I can't show you all those details to be able to prove all of that. So, um, and the reason why they published all these different books in different times was because in 1840, they tried to publish it to try and see if they could teach anybody to crochet. And um, they was nearly there. It was so close to with all the pattern writings. Um, and in 1842, um, it was tested by sending a pattern to America just to see if the Americans clicked on um, to what was happening there. Unfortunately, in 1843, Charles Walker and Mademoiselle Rigo both died, which then left Mr. Spencer and Miss Lambert in a quandary because now the person who should have actually been patenting everything had actually died and you can't patent something if you're dead. However, I do believe under the rules of the laws of patenting, there is actually a clause where it can be backdated to the person that it was responsible for if enough evidence is provided. And hopefully, with um, there's, a piece, there's a piece of work, which I've gone into 42 minutes, this is mental, okay? This piece of work there, okay? That's actually an artifact, apparently in somewhere in Netherlands or something. Um, that actually is this pattern in reverse. Um, pardon me, sorry, I'm burping now, okay? So, um, and then by 1846, they finally cracked it. And they finally got the actual... But they've got the actual works done so that in because the actual names of the stitches was the biggest problem of what was they going to call all the stitches because there were so many different names with all these stitches that they was using for this work and then because obviously while they're doing it with the correct with, with um this with the with the irish new stitches have come along and you've got the way that they form them together so you um and um and say, by 1839, they actually had the granny square. And the granny square was presented in court, in the patent court. And when it was presented in the courts as part of the evidence, because they needed to prove that they could actually teach it to somebody, they had got all of the girls, well, not all of the girls from the factory, but they all sat in a row, all crocheting away. And when you look at somebody who's crocheting, um, and you've got to think that they're dressed in Victorian times in their in their um in the clothes that they was wearing with the the white aprons over the top of dark items because they needed to wear their sunday best because they was going to go in, um to a patent thing and probably see the queen so they really needed to be like on their best behavior and the best of the best was sent there so they all crocheted and they was working as a teamwork so that they was, they started off like in a chain um and so they were showing you they was working the yellow they was working the red they was working the black and then there was like the, stitch, the stitching of them all together and then the actual doing, the actual work around the outside as um, one person starts and as it gets so far around the table, because they used to have it upside down on the table, um, 
And then the other one would then, so you'd all sit around the table and you'd like play, like play musical chairs. Um, probably where musical chairs even might have even been invented from. Who knows? But, um, <laughs> sorry. Um, and I know this is like immensely long video and there's loads of people that are going to be like, I do not want to listen to this. I'm not interested. Um, but I know, I know I'm right. I absolutely know it. And there's there's more little bits as well it's like later on and then the proof that i've got about the the development of the actual writing of the patterns is because in 1846 mamza rigo's book is published which is where i learned how to do this stitch which i have proven that so technically i have learned to crochet from mamza rigo's instructions because they all started off from there because they just did <laughs> um and so then in 1847, Miss Lambert republishes her book with alterations to the history and to patterns. OK, and. Um, and then in 1851, I've got my Bridget Hutton, who's registered as living in Ball in the area where I live in Nottingham. And then we go to 1859. Miss Lambert's book in 1859 includes all of the works of the previously published, published people. So it's got in there, it's got um, the Jane Gogin's work, it's got, um, um, who was the other one? Somebody called Jay Ball in America is also another one that was in there and they're all together there's all inside all of the written works there's like little tiny clues of history to do these things in italics to do with the painting the artist the tapestry the inventors the um the copper plating describing the copper plating absolutely everything is there when you when you know it's there and you're like oh my god i was so surprised so I then get back to now, we're in 2016, it is uh, May the 23rd, it is Monday, um, and I want to declare that I have solved the mystery of crochet, and um, I think it's brilliant, I think it's brilliant um, that they, you know, like, you say, if you go see photos of the scarves of this wall, they actually, apparently if you try and take a photo of it inside the glass cabinet, it comes out a different colour, um, so don't, I don't know whether that is because that they've actually used um, a special lens over the cases or whether there's some actual special properties of this wall. Um, I really don't know. So um, I do believe that that's it. I'm completed. I've, I've given you a um, synopsis of the whole events. I would love to write this into a story and I would love... or. A, to be fair, it should be made into a film and it should be the, the Queen in, of England and everything should um, be respected and everything for protecting Queen Victoria. And for all the years that they've actually protected France um, for their discoveries, because at the, at the end of the day, crochet itself was actually, it was, I do believe that Mademoiselle Rigo, I think the the, the de la, Bronchon d'Air is actually the name of the road that she was, I think she was in a carriage and that she was, she'd got a crochet hook with her and she was just messing about with some strands of a, of, of a yarn, could have even been her own hair for all I know, um, but because she, she, she would have taken her hook with her everywhere and I'm not quite sure but I think that um, Queen Elizabeth may actually have that hook, I don't have any proof on that one. Um, but I do think that she quite possibly does because somebody needs to have it saved somewhere. And I want to thank the royal family for leaving all these amazing clues everywhere and involving people like the army. I mean, obviously the army was involved because they needed to fight the wars of that time. But then um, even just before she died, um, Queen Victoria, Queen Victoria sent out all these, um, there was in, I think it was nine in 1900 or late 1889, 1899 even. <laughs> I can't do my maths backwards, can I now? I'm so excited with everything. Um, for her to send out those with um, her initials on them, um, whether she actually crocheted them or not, um, that's always under debate, but it's quite possible her daughters did. But maybe not. Maybe Mademoiselle Rigo actually crocheted those scarves. And maybe this, say, this this special wall can actually be dated back 
further than nylon supposed to have been invented. Um, this was my pineapple bag. Uh, this is this bag actually I do believe was to to carry the pineapples in, by the way. Um, with its little and it's actually made. It's, this is this is the one that's made out of the five arches, which is my translation. So um, I think I've included absolutely everything that I possibly can. I've been on. I've like spoken for fifteen minutes now, nearly. And honestly, it's like oh, I could talk like a monster trying to explain it. So it, the, the, all the little tiny details of everything that I've actually discovered and everything is just amazing. So um, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know whether I'm going to be able to upload a whole hour in one go worth of video on YouTube. I don't know if I can do that, whether I'll have to break it down or something. But I just want to really, really thank everybody for, for watching, for liking, for subscribing, for for everything. And I want you to understand that this actually is all um, it's all because of historical writings of all searching for a mysterious thread at the end of the day. And all the discoveries that our ancient ancestors who began from Mesopotamia, uh, which is the, the Tigris River, so this is the borderline in between Iran and Iraq. And I'm sorry, no, Iran can't claim it, and neither can Iraq. It's actually bang on in the middle. Yeah? So if you bang on in the middle, like in the centre of the star, and from the centre of the star, it spread to the north and south, to the east and the west, and it became all the way around the world. And back again. Okay, so there we have it. Thanks again. Bye for now.